Mrs. Locke, you were born at uh, Little Bay Islands in 1903. Yes, 1903. And you lived there all your life? <clears throat> yes, until now since I moved up here. How many years ago is that? We'll be six, uh, the 23rd of December. Uh, you were telling me that Little Bay Island, when you were growing up, was a very prosperous place. So it was. And it was really prosperous. There were lots of business going on there. The James Strong Lim Limited had a big flourishing business, fishery on the fishery. And there was S.T. Jones. They were really big businesses, weren't they? Yes. There's, that was the, the largest was there. Then there were smaller stores around. You were telling me at one time when you were growing up there were three yes. businesses there. Yes, there was around 12 or 13 well, different stores. You know, during my lifetime growing up, now there's only one, they say. So everything was humming there, wasn't it? Yes, certainly was. It was also a shipbuilding center, wasn't it? Yes, there was a... Or yes, because Strong's used to have ships built there. There was the James Strong. There were several uh, big... Uh, Schooners and that built there, you know. It must be quite a different place now when you visit oh, to what you remember it to be. All the difference in the world now. And yes, I suppose. The dilapidated buildings and the population is down. down too, isn't it? Yes, down quite a bit. But still, it's it's regarded as one of the most beautiful places in it's Notre Dame. It's a beautiful Dame place Bay. and always was. Yes, yes, it's a beautiful place. Mrs. Locke, when I think of uh, Little Bay Island, I always think of Helena Squires, whose mm -hmm. uh, husband was Squires. Sir Richard Squires, the Prime Minister. Yes. Did you know her? No, she was. Uh, I knew her just to see her when she used to visit. See, but I didn't uh, know her just like only through seeing her when she'd visit her, her home. Her parents there. Yes, mm -hmm. she was quite a colorful woman, wasn't she? She sure was. <laughs> she was a politician in her own right. Yes. Mrs. Locke, tell me what life was like at Little Bay Island when you were growing up there in the early years of the century. It was a very active place because uh, the different things were going on, you know. Everything was organized. Yes. There was different yes. societies and different things like that. There was the, the Epworth League and the YPU, UCW, or, uh, Women's Ladies Aid and, and Women's Association. Was before it became UCW, mm. I was president of the Women's Association. And then there was the LOBA. I was uh, recording secretary in that mm -hmm. for several years. And there was a community club, Mrs. Will Strong, she was president of that. What was that, <coughs> what was the function of that? Well, that was a meeting and it used to be held at the home of Mrs. Uh, Will Strong. For ladies only? Or? No, uh, the com uh, it was the Girls Guild first, and then they called it a community club and took in the boys too. They used to come in and uh, be knitting bruise knits and doing woodwork, you know, mm -hmm. like making the wood spoons and things like that while the girls would be at their fancy work. And then they'd be, after they'd be practicing then for plays and during the spring of the year we'd always have a sports day, which was real high. One of the week. highlights of the season. Yes. Yeah, on the 17th of March we'd practice and we'd have a play, put off our plays. St. Patrick's Day. It, yeah. And then we repeat it, or 24th, there'd be different races. Of, you mean down the 24th the, of May, then? 24th of May, we'd have uh, down at the field, there'd be uh, different sports, like races and target shooting and the mile race and robot race, different things like that. So Last of all, there'd be a big football match and a supper after up in the hall, and after that, around 8 o'clock, they'd go and put off this play again, two and a half or three hour play. Mm -hmm. So what about the, the uh, in the summertime? Would there be a garden party, Mrs. Locke? Sometimes, well, we'd have our picnic, our Sunday school picnic. Which was in the summertime. Garden party. Which, uh, that was, well, the garden party, yes. Mm -hmm. just after we Where did you go? Down, where, down where? in Strong's Field. Oh, yes. The same place that they'd have the celebration of sports day. I suppose you weren't even aware that you were living on an island. You had your own doctor there. Yes, at one time the doctor was there was a doctor stationed there, mm -hmm. and we had the bank there, and customs office, and office, and telegraph office, everything like that. You know, self-contained little town. Yeah, real, real lovely place it was. It really was. Then, if you did have to go to a hospital, I suppose Twillinggate wasn't that far away, was it? Well. 
it, it it was quite a distance to go down, but at once, one time there was a hospital in Pilly's Island. Oh yes, of course, and that's quite near and, you people. Yeah, yeah, that was that was way back. We made a good many trips down to Trungate to the hospital with people, you know. Yeah. Well, that was the only one from the go to that time. Now you uh, you and your husband operated a, a passenger boat. You're telling me. Yes. Were you a cook on that? <laughs> yes, I used to go. That's what I go for cooking. Yeah, I, I heard cooking. that you're a great cook. Someone told I me that. I don't know but about that, but I, I can make a dinner. I bet you can. <laughs> supper. How long would it take you now if you left uh, Little Bay Island to go to Twillingate? What? How many hours would that be? Six hours, I think, around there. So you'd serve a meal to them? Oh, yes. I'd cook whatever. When dinner time was come, mm. I'd have our supper, I'd have my meals mm. ready on time. <laughs> how many passengers would you take? Well, we take uh, six or seven or more than that. Well, I tell you one time, we left Springdale and went to Bay Vert with a crowd of from, we had 19, I think, was aboard that time. So it must have been a quite a big There's a lot of vessel. pupils from the, from, the school, from the St. John's. They went down there to uh, Bay Vert. There was a mining town down there then at that time. What would be the passage from, say, from uh, Little Bay Island to Twillingate? How much would it cost a passenger? It would be a trip. Mm-hmm. See, I don't remember now. I wrote that part of the no, cost of it. That's a long time ago. That's a it? long time How ago. How long ago was that? My husband, uh, I've been dead for 13 years. Mm-hmm. So how long did he operate well, the uh, passengers? Well, we were yeah. uh, uh, in uh, 19, uh, 1931. About 1933, we went to the Labrador on the first boat, the Miss Labrador, we had. About 1933, I'd say. You started the passenger service. Mm-hmm. You and your husband went to Labrador as far as uh, Rigolette, you're telling me. Yes, we went north as far as Rigolette, and then we went up to Northwest River and went up the bay. Which vessel was this? This Miss Labrador. Now, was that built at Little Bay Island, Mrs. Uh, yes, m- my uh, husband and his father built that. And she was quite a large vessel, we met, wasn't she? We used to live over on Max Island first there, and that's where we, we had our home. We built the boat there. We built the second boat there, too. The three boats was built over there on Max Island. But during that summer, that after we built the passenger, the larger passenger boat, we moved in Mr. Rich Jones's premises. Mm-hmm. He uh, sold it, moved up town. We moved over to his place. We lived there in their whole house for one winter. And then the next year, Clem's father and another man built our new home. Mm-hmm. Clem was your husband? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what was the old house? I heard that was quite a big house, wasn't it? Yes, the yes. Jones' whole house, Mr. Rich Jones. It was a big house, wasn't it? Yes, that was a big How did you ever keep that warm? Oh, no problem. No? We had a oil stove in it. Mm-hmm. Plenty of wood outside the wood stove. And no problem keeping it warm. But getting back to the Labrador trip, Mrs. Locke, uh, what was the reason of your going down? Well, we had uh, we went down to Strong, stocked the boat with mm-hmm. the Dice. merchandise, and uh, no, Max Strong, Mr. Dolph Strong's son, he was around in his early twenties. He was in charge of it then. And oh, they uh, chartered your husband's boat. Yes, oh, I see. Yes, mm-hmm. and Max was doing. Life insurance as well. Was it a prosperous voyage? Oh, well, they said they were quite pleased with it after we came home. Did you ever go down again? Was that a regular no, thing, just that one occasion? Just that one mm-hmm. time. Was that your first trip to the Labrador? Yes. Did you like the scenery? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I All the birds. And, yes, you with your <clears throat> love of, uh, of plants and bird life. You must they have put, a real paradise for you. Oh, it was beautiful. We were coming up to Squash or Run. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. I never heard of and that they, one. And there was a, oh, it was beautiful coming up the scenery and that coming up there. And I wanted to go ashore, so they anchored. And they wrote, I wanted to get some berries. So they wrote and me and put me, I got out um, ashore trying to look for some berries. I couldn't find any. They wouldn't leave me very long. They came in. And we saw some bear tracks, mm-hmm. uh, like big tracks, thought was bears. <laughs> I didn't stay there after that. <laughs> I bet. <clears throat> what time of the year was that, Mrs. Locke? Oh, in the summer, around August. 
Lots of bird life there. Yeah, just beautiful. You also went then to, uh, you, well, you went in all the different communities. Well, we went, yes, we'd go in the d different communities down there, even yeah. tied up to some of the schooners from home. Well, some of the fishing huh? schooners from yeah. home were down around mm -hmm. the different places, like uh, Square Islands and mm -hmm. Dunkling. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkling Island. <laughs> Black Tickle. Mm -hmm. and Emily oh. Harbor, you in there? Oh, I guess that's further no, north. I just forget the names now, but... What stands out in your memory about that trip? Impressed with the scenery? Cape Fox was beautiful. There's like layers of green on a big high mountain. It was beautiful. Anyone live there? No, no. no. Just the scenery. And Damno Run, that's where the Sagooners were in there. And it was beautiful all up around Labrador, I thought. It was, it yes, was it is spectacular scenery, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. We went on, up, came up and around the Cape. We went into England for all night. I think that's where we were. You were in Northwest River, you were telling me. Oh, yes, and the Indians were there, camped over on the beach in the wigwams. I went ashore in the boat. Max put me ashore. I went to go up to Hudson Bay store, buy some groceries. And when I went in, it was full of those Indians, you know. I was kind of scared, <laughs> but the clerk came right along to me and served me. I got my, picked up my groceries. And uh, one of them followed me out. And I didn't know what was what. She was saying something to me, but I couldn't, I didn't know what it was. And the little children were all around, you know. Mm. She, she was saying, I don't know, speaking two or three times. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. And they'd laugh, you know, the little ones. And she stared upon me and I said, well, what is it? I don't know what you mean. I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. <laughs> Good morning. And children laugh, you know, and she shook her fist at me. <sighs> so I went up to the minister's wife. Went, I went up to the parsonage there, the manse. Mrs. Burry was there, and I said, well, I don't know what that poor lady was trying to tell me, that Indian woman. I said, I couldn't understand her. She said, did you have anything sparkling on, anything, any necklace or something like that? I said, no. Oh, I said, I did have a little clip in my hair with rhinestones in it. That's what was she wanted, she said. She was pointing anything bright, she said, Oh Meg or something she called her. <laughs> that's what she that's what she is after. She if she sees anything that, yeah. this with sparkles, she that she wants it herself. That's what she was trying to tell me. This is uh, Reverend Lester Burry's wife. Yes. Mm. Did you what did you think of Reverend Burry? Oh, I thought he was wonderful. He did a great uh, he, job there, he didn't he? He certainly among the people, did. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. He, he had that radio station, didn't he? Yes. Used to talk to the we trappers and keep in touch oh, with yes. them. Oh, yeah. yes. It, it was, it was wonderful. So was Mrs. Burry. They were lovely people. We went down with them. Clem and I went uh, down with them when they went to uh, have their service down to uh, Grand Village. There was Kenamu and Kenamish. We were ashore in all those places. And he went down there. And there was a family of the groves. One place he were, there was only two families living there. But he went up to visit them. In fact, he was there all night, and uh, we must have been too near the sandbar. We toppled over, the boat toppled over. Oh. The water went out, see? Yes. And the boat toppled over, I just on its side. No damage done, but no. it was scary. I bet it was. That's a big river flows out there, yes. the Northwest River, isn't it? Yes, a big river. It was beautiful, and one, one Sunday, we went up. And Clem and I and Max went in uh, went up in a canoe Max went alone in his canoe and we went up and went up in Grand Lake in a small place down in Grand Lake and just right there at the same time we were down there Northwest River which is beautiful up there I loved it so you did a lot of traveling by boat with your husband oh I did yes for years mm -hmm. I went around like that with with him cooking for the <laughs> For the post office inspector, Mr. Vallis, and different ones. I remember. I forget the names of I others, guess the but I remember. The school inspector too, eh? And the school mm. it was Raymond Ivamy. Yes, and uh, there were several others, but Mr. Ivamy, most of all, I can remember him because he was with us the most. Mm -hmm. See. So he charged the boat. What did he get to the various uh, communities? Yes. What would you serve them? Oh, uh, I cook my dinner. You get fresh fish, of course. Yeah, yeah fresh fish. What I've had veg vegetables and mm. give them the same meals as other. As though they were home. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Was no complaints. No complaints. <laughs> oh, they enjoyed my meals. I seem to. I bet they did. Mm. I know one time we had all those uh, students aboard. 
I believe I had, that was a Friday. I had fisherman's brews that day for dinner. Mm. And the boys all came down, and, and they ate it, you know. They enjoyed it, but they used to get seasick. Mm -hmm. There were 19 of them there. Mm -hmm. You lived all your life then in uh, Little Bay Island. Yes. And when you and your husband retired, your husband took up gardening, you were telling me, and you had a, quite a beautiful garden there. Oh, we had a, we had a good garden. I to, see pictures of it there. You, How many roses did you say you planted We there? had a hundred uh, hybrid teas mm -hmm. and the flower bundles and grand floras. Like a fabulous we, garden uh, in that photograph. It's been a lot of work for you. It was a lot of work. The Clem did the most of the work. He made the one of the gardens there, dug out the basement and uh, made the garden itself where the whole house was. He did that himself. So the roses there um, did really well, didn't they? Yes, they were beautiful. Is that your most successful thing you grew, the roses? Well, that was... Uh, there were a lot of other different shrubs and that around, you know, that was really good, but the, oh, I think the roses was, uh, was our best. You went in for a lot of perennials, too, didn't you? Yes. And a few annuals there. I see the namisi and that sort of thing. So you must have had good uh, good soil there. Did you bring it in? No, no. There was uh, on one side of the walk, uh, there was a grass ground, but where the house went out, they took the house away and lanced it down. And the fellow the, bought the house and had it lanced it down across the hills, down in Campbell's Garden, we used to call it down there. And that's where we made the, uh, the garden. Clem dug out the ground from in under the house when he oh, made yeah. the basement because mm -hmm. they built the house and they didn't have a basement. See, yeah. he dug out under the uh, after and got the, made the basement. But uh, he carried the hearth out there and got uh, may have got some somewhere else, you know. So did you grow vegetables as well, Mrs. Locke? Uh, well, yeah, I had a little kitchen garden back of the house. What did you grow there? Uh, what well, few potatoes mm -hmm. and tomatoes and carrot and little cabbage. Well, that's what I like best of all. I, Clem, I told Clem he could have the garden, the flower garden, because I'd rather have grow something to eat. Now, that's the reverse. Usually men like to grow vegetables and the women the flowers. <laughs> well, it was different from me. Yeah. I loved the, I liked the flowers, too, you know. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to grow something to eat. And was it a tradition at Little Bay Islands for nice gardens? or? Oh, lots of people. Some had their little gardens, you know. Mm. Yeah. There was Mrs. Sims there. She has her gar She has a garden too in her place. A lovely garden. <laughs> you really things. created a paradise there, didn't you? It looks absolutely lovely. Do many birds come to your feeders? Not that many, you know. I wouldn't have thought that you know there would be a gardens in uh, Little Bay Island. You know, I, of course, I have never been there, but most Newfoundland islands are see, sort of bleak and barren. We had trees too, see, because mm -hmm. we had uh, the large plum tree and damsons. Mm -hmm. And gooseberries, black currants, red currants, and white currants, and strawberries, and raspberries. Mm. We had it all there. Oh. Boys used to enjoy, uh, enjoy getting up in the trees. I bet they did. <laughs> and getting the berries, mm. and I guess the girls too. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Locke, uh, your mother and father born at Little Bay Island as well? No, Dad was, but uh, Mom was born at Jackson's Cove. She was a knight, she you're a, telling me. Yes, mm -hmm. she was a knight. Pamela and Jonathan Knight were her mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. Your father, his father was born at Little Bay Island, you were telling me, too. Where did they uh, come from? Formerly from England, I think. Your maiden name was? Tuffin. Oh, yes, Tuffin. There was only two families there, James and Dad, mm -hmm. Edward. Do you remember your grandfather? No, mm -hmm. I don't remember anything about him. He was dead before I was born. What did your father do? He was a fisherman, and he used to work at the at Strong's. Mm -hmm. That's where he did most, because he used to go on a trading school, and sometimes when they go to St. John's on coasting, he'd be there. He used to go up St. John's. And the, they had schooners traveling back and forth, you mm -hmm. know, from home to St. John's. And he used to go up there, but my brothers, I had two brothers, and they had schooners. He used to, they used to go on to Labrador. Lovely <laughs> growing up at the Little Bay Island, I bet. Yes, it was grand. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Did you travel outside of your town much? Did you go many places, you know, when you were growing up? Not that much, Shoni. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, over to Jackson's Cove and mm -hmm. down to Nippers Harbor with visit my aunt. Mm -hmm. And went to Grand Falls once. That's uh, not very much. I didn't go. What time did you go to Grand Falls? What year was that, do you think? Oh, I went to Grand Falls in, in 19, uh, 1931. 1931, the year I, before I was married, I went in. But I was in Grand Falls before that, too. I was in... Uh, 
or years back. I forget now just when. But 1931, I went in there. What did you think of the Grand Falls then? Oh, I liked it in there. I stayed with my Uncle Jack. Mm -hmm. It was a very prosperous place then, wasn't it? Yes, certainly was. Everything was humming there then. Mm -hmm. But yes. you could easily get around, couldn't you, from Little Bay Island because of so many sh boats and ships coming and going always from St. John's to all over Newfoundland, really. Yes, but I never, I didn't bother. I liked, I liked at home. I was home with my mother. My mother was alone, and I used to work there. I was working up to uh, Mr. Joe Jones' store mm -hmm. there for four years. What sort of a salary did you get, Mrs. Locke? <laughs> Started with $16. A month. And I was getting 20 when I finished. <laughs> so you really got to know the people there. Oh, yes, I used to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the prices, uh, some of the some of the things you sold. Was it a general store, was it, where you worked? Yes, mm -hmm. just a general store. Can you think of some of the, the prices compared with now? I think, I don't think I can remember much mm -hmm. about it, to tell you the truth, not now. Of course, it was mostly the barter system, wasn't it? Yes. You know, people didn't have that much money, did they? Some did, I suppose. There, it was generally the cash over the counter, you know. Would there be much coming and going from the other settlements to and from Little Bay Island? Oh, yes, there was visitors always coming and going, you know. All the relatives would be coming and the children and was away would be coming home and spend Christmas always mm. during that time. I suppose the old people would get together and tell stories. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Did they talk much about ghost stories in those days? I used to hear them telling lots of things. You know, people used to come in and visit Mom, the old ladies. And the old men used to come in and see Dad. Tell about different things. Can you recall any of the ghost stories they tell? Was there any house that was supposed to be haunted at Little no, Bay Island? No, no, I don't think. Any Nothing places where they see the ships and the lights? And oh, I saw, yes, there was always lights out on the bay. Is the weather lights, they say it was, you know. Used to be dancing out on the bay. I saw them myself. Forecast of storms or something like that, but they were always out there. And there was two used to dance up and down. And uh, they said it was, Two sons, the father, turned them out one one night, and they went out in the bay, went out in boat, and was lost. And this is ever after that, those two lights used to dance back and mm -hmm. forth on the water. Well, there was one light was always there, and we'd see it. I could look through our the bedroom window and see it uh, out on outside the shore, take a bridge out on the water. And you remember that cruel father and those poor sons. But uh, there was different lights, you know. Those two had nothing to do with the, this other one. And there was another light. We were up in boat one time. We had the customs officer. We took him up to Tommy's arm. Bore a ship. Was up there. They used to go up and, and uh, the ship used to come for the wood. And the customs officer used to go up. He had um, things to do with the... the clearing the ship or something, you know, and uh, we were coming down. And there's another fellow up to Springdale Cyril, that had a boat, Cyril Jones. And I said, there's Cyril coming, and I said, behind us. And I said, he's gaining on us. I said, don't do that, because our boat fa goes faster than his does. And this light come on, came, came right around us. And Mr. Hyde said, that's no boat, he said. And Clem said, no, that's the weather light. It's like the scene out there. And it came and it went right around us. And, and we went down and Cyril came behind us. And he saw the light and saw it stopped and went out. That was our boat broke down. Were you nervous at the, that happening? <laughs> I was a little. What about your husband, Mrs. Locke? Did he ever have any experiences? Did he believe in that sort of thing, you know, the supernatural? Did he ever talk about no. that? No. No. <laughs> anything about it. What about your father and mother? I suppose they had their stories. Oh, yes. They didn't talk much about things like that. Mom wouldn't, anyway. Were there any people supposed to be witches around there in those days? There was a, there were several on Little Bay Island. We were only talking about that the other day here. There were several on Little Bay Island. And they said to you, um, and there was one old lady who was in our house one time, and she told about an incident that happened. It was, uh, it was down to, uh, to an, uh, it was to an outport. There was a man who used to go out sailing, and he'd take this uh, a boy who used to go out, the son of another lady was there. Her son used to go out sealing with him. He'd always do well with seals. Mm. So every year he'd take this one boy, uh, this one man, with him, and he'd do real well with seals every year. So 
this year, he said, well, I'm changing this year. I'm not going to take somebody else because he always had this other fellow and he thought he'd give us someone else their chance to get some seals with him, do well. So, well, this woman said, well, if you do, you won't get any. If you don't take her, didn't take her son, he wouldn't be getting any seals. Well, he said, that, that is it may, I'm still going to give that fellow a chance to try to get some money. And he took him with him. And they didn't get neither seal. And didn't get either seal. And this, uh, this old lady used to attend class meeting now. This is what was told to me. And she was in class at this time. And he came in, still he didn't have any seals. And he said, but I'm going to finish that. And he drew her out on a paper and uh, shot at her. And they said she fell down in the classroom on the floor. So that ended his... He went on and got his seals. I've it. often heard stories of that sort of thing. Yeah. That was told to me by one old lady. It was told it in to Mom now, but I was there, see, because I was <laughs> eager to hear anything like mm, that. Yes, it's real folklore, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, a lot of witches around, weren't there? I don't, I don't know about a lot, but every every community seemed to well, have one or two. Well, there was home. There was one person, I know, an old lady, they said. Well, one old lady told me that she knew she could do it. She said, I know she can because there was an old lady come over from another place there, Northern Harbor. She had some eggs for sale. And poor thing, she tried to get a bit of money where she could, see, because it was not very flourishing at those days. And she came, brought over a dozen of eggs to sell to this lady. And she wouldn't buy them. She said, you give them to me. And she said, I can't give them to you. She said, I can't afford to. She said, if you don't buy them, she said, I, I, I got to take them home and give them to the children to eat. Because she said, we haven't got that much to eat, and I can't give you with eggs. Well, she said, they won't do you any good if you don't give them to me. So the poor lady went home, and on her way home, she fell down and smashed every egg. Well, that's true, they said. Yes, it was strange, wasn't it? You know, the local residents sort of feared them, didn't they? Yeah, but that was way back. Way, way back. That was yeah. way, way back mm. for my time. No witches in your day. No, no witches in my day, thank goodness. <laughs> you write poetry, that, don't you? No. You write poetry. <laughs> now, what was the story you tell me? There's lots of cats come around here. You will never believe this, I haven't a doubt. I don't know yet what it was all about, but a cat came to our door last night, just after I gave Fisherman's Bruce to the cats they eat every bite. I went to the door just to see what it could be, and eight young cats sat there looking up at me. The fisherman brews t tasted so good they wanted more, and maybe they thought they would get it by, by knocking the door. I gave them more than some milk in a pan, and they surrounded it as only cats can. The poor little things are going to be put away, but they will never forget that they enjoy their stay. For uh, some of those in the cottages sure treated them good. For the sparrow, crows, and the cats, they sure got their food. <laughs> so you were moved to write that. You saw those cats in there. You were feeding this three-legged cat. <laughs> <laughs> they were feeding, we were feeding the, this three-legged cat, and there was another, that she had lost her paw in a trap somewhere, somehow, and there was another cat there with her. So after a while, they used to pick up their food and carry it away. And we wondered what it was all about. And some lady up there said that they were had little ones up there. And they were carrying, carrying up their food to them. Mm -hmm. So by and by, down comes uh, four little kittens with the cats. And where we had a crowd of hate altogether. That's our... <laughs> <laughs> That's the last of the tale. <laughs> but didn't you say that uh, with a knock on the, didn't they uh, knock on the door? But just like a knock at the door, because I said to Rosie, was I said, who on earth is that now? I thought there was someone out there. So I went out, and there was a cat, the whole cat was in by the door. She must have tapped on the door with her paw or her tail, and here was the others all sat up looking up at the door, waiting for something to eat. Six kittens in all. Well. Needless to say, they got something. They did. And they got were, another uh, pan of milk. And you were moved to write that poem. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start writing poetry, Mrs. Locke? Oh, I <laughs> only just to, just to do that for fun when it comes to me. The first one, I believe, was for <laughs> a book, a schooner, was launched down to uh, Little Bay Islands. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote one there. And then I wrote about the church, and the new church was built, and the whole church when it was torn down. 
Um, Has it ever been published? No, I don't publish anything. I just you to throw it one side. Oh, it's too bad. You had a good life there, Mrs. Locke. <laughs> I had a wonderful life. I sure did. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful life home, and I'm having a wonderful life here. You like it here at the Senior I'd Citizens love Home, it. yes. Just love and you have it. lots and lots of friends. You I have me. lots of friends. Sure do. And being the good cook that you are, you, <laughs> you have lots I of people. Even when say. I was sick, I had good friends. I yeah. wasn't able to do anything. <laughs> I still had my friends doing everything they could for me. You have that they wonderful reputation done. of being a good cook. Thank I don't you. know anything about being a good cook. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>